the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I would like to welcome all of you here present for this wonderful occasion, and we will start by the exhortation, the traditional exhortation to marriage. So please be seated, except for the lovely couple, Neil. Dear friends in Christ, as you know, you're about to enter into a union which is most sacred and most serious. A union which was established by God himself. By it, he gave to men a share in the greatest work of creation, the work of the continuation of the human race. And in this way, he sanctified human love and enabled man and woman to help each other live as children of God by sharing a common life under his fatherly care. Because God himself is thus its author, marriage is of its very nature a holy institution, requiring of those who enter it a complete and unreserved giving of self. But Christ our Lord added to the holiness of marriage an even deeper meaning and a higher beauty. He referred to the love of marriage to describe his own love for his church that is, for the people of God whom he redeemed by his own blood. And so he gave to Christians a new vision of what married life ought to be, a life of self-sacrificing love like his own. It is for this reason that this, his apostle, St. Paul, clearly states that marriage is now and for all time to be considered a great mystery, intimately bound up with the supernatural union of Christ and the Church, which union is also to be its pattern. This union then is most serious because it will bind you together for life in a relationship so close and so intimate that it will profoundly influence your whole future. That future with its hopes and disappointments, its successes and its failures, its pleasures and its pains, its joys and its sorrows is hidden from your eyes. You know that these elements are mingled in every life and are to be expected in your own. And so, not knowing what is before you, you take each other for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death. Truly then, these words are most serious. It is a beautiful tribute to your undoubted faith in each other that recognizing their full import, you are nevertheless so willing and ready to pronounce them. And because these words involve such solemn obligations, it is most fitting that you rest the security of your wedded life upon the great principle of self-sacrifice. And so you begin your married life by the voluntary and complete surrender of your individual lives in the interest of that deeper and wider life for which you are to have in common. Henceforth, you belong entirely to each other. You will be one in mind, one in heart, and one in affections. And whatever sacrifices you may hereafter be required to make to preserve this common life, always make them generously. Sacrifice is usually difficult and irksome. Only love can make it easy and perfect love can make it a joy. We are willing to give in proportion as we love, and when love is perfect, the sacrifice is complete. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and the Son so loved us that he gave himself for our salvation. Greater love than this no one has, that one lay down his life for his friends. No greater blessing can come to your married life than pure conjugal love, loyal and true to the end. May then this love, with which you join your hands and hearts today, never fail, but grow deeper and stronger as the years go on. And if true love and the unselfish spirit of perfect sacrifice guide your every action, you can expect the greatest measure of earthly happiness that may be allotted to men in this veil of tears. The rest is in the hands of God. Nor will God be wanting to your needs. He will pledge you the lifelong support of his graces and the holy sacrament which you are now going to receive. Please rise.
Michael Francis, do you take Lauren Marie here present for your lawful wife according to the right of our Holy Mother the Church? I do. Lauren Marie, do you take Michael Francis here present for your lawful husband according to the right of our Holy Mother the Church? I do. Now join your right hands and say after me. I, Michael Francis, take you, Lauren Marie, for my lawful wife to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. I, Lauren Marie, take you, Michael Francis, for my lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forth, for better, for worse, for rich, for poor, and for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. Ego coniungo vos in matrimonium in nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. I call upon all of you here present to be witnesses of this holy union which I have now blessed. Man must not separate, separate what God has joined together. Domine exaudio rationem meam, Dominus vobisco. O Remus, benedict Domine annulos istos, quos nos in tuo nomine benedicimus, ut quis eos gestaverin fidelitatem integram invicem tenentes in pace et voluntate tua, per maneant atque in mutua caritate semper vivant, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Now that you have sealed a truly Christian marriage, give this wedding ring, these wedding rings to each other, repeating after me. Take this ring as a pledge of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take this ring as a pledge of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Strengthen, O God, what you have wrought in us from your holy temple which is in Jerusalem. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Pater Noster, qui es in Cheris, sanctificetur nomen tuum. Adveniat renium tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cedo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. 
Salvos faxervos tuos. Deus meus sperantes inter. Mite eis domine auxilium de sancto. Et de sion tua re eos. Esto eis domine toris fortitudinis. A face nemici. Domine exaudio rationem mea. Et clamor meus a te venia. Dominus vobisco. Et cum spiritu tuum. Oremus. We beg you, Lord, to look on these your servants and graciously to uphold the institution of marriage established by you for the continuation of the human race so that they who have been joined together by your authority may remain faithful together by your help through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you by the word of his mouth and unite your hearts in the enduring bond of pure love. Amen. May you be blessed in your children and may the love that you lavish on them be returned a hundredfold. Amen. May the peace of Christ dwell always in your hearts and in your home. May you have true friends to stand by you, both in joy and in sorrow. May you be ready with help and consolation for all those who come to you in need and may the blessings promised to the compassionate descend in abundance on your house amen may you be blessed in your work and enjoy its fruits may cares never cause you distress nor the desire for earthly possessions lead you astray but may your heart's concern be always for the treasures laid up for you in the life of heaven amen May the Lord grant you fullness of years, so that you may reap the harvest of a good life. And after you have served him with loyalty in his kingdom on earth, may he take you up into his eternal dominions in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And we will now proceed with Mass, and there will be a sermon following the Gospel explaining a little more uh, this beautiful Mass. So uh, now is the time where the Mass begins, the sacrifice of our Lord, and it is offered for both of you today. Thank you. 
On this joyful occasion for Michael, Francis, and Lauren Marie, of course, we congratulate them. We 
are in union of, of prayers with them today. And uh, of course, we would like to thank, extend our thanks to His Eminence Cardinal Tobin for uh, allowing uh, this, you know, in this wonderful, uh, beautiful uh, Archbasilica. And uh, to thank all the ministers who came, all the servers, the choir, um, beautifully sung, the organist too. So, and all of you made this possible. So families and friends of Lauren and Michael, what a beautiful occasion this is. Uh, so as you've noticed, this is the extraordinary form of the Roman Rite. So uh, just a little announcement for communion today. So it's beautiful in this basilica. We still have the communion rail. So Holy Communion is received kneeling and on the tongue in the extraordinary form. So if you cannot kneel, uh, you remain standing, but it's received on the tongue though. And uh, the priest says the words, uh, the body, Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuam in vitam eternam, Amen. So the priest says the Amen at the end. And um, so please, you're invited to Holy Communion. Uh, all of those, you know, practicing Catholics without any unconfessed grave sins on your conscience and having fasted at least one hour. And uh, if, you, uh, if you don't want to come up for a Holy Communion, you can still come up for a blessing. So if you want to kneel and cross your arms, I'll give you a blessing. Okay. So um, as you've noticed, so this is the extraordinary form of the Roman Rite. So it's uh, a celebration that has built throughout the ages through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And uh, it's a timeless heritage of the church. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI had said, what was precious to former generations is also precious to us. So with the help of uh, St. John Paul II, when he founded my group, the Fraternity of St. Peter, uh, they uh, took care of our constitutions, but it was precisely for that apostolate, so that anyone who feels uh, drawn, who is attached to this beautiful liturgy, may have it. And uh, so Lauren and Michael certainly are, so that's what they asked for. And it's through you, thank you, that we're able to have this today. And uh, also there should be booklets in all your pews, so this is to follow better, to help you follow if you're wondering what is Father saying up there. Okay, so you can find those beautiful prayers in there. And uh, if not, if this is, a, it may be a bit of a workout to follow, you can just sit here and soak in, drink in this beauty. And in the sermon, I will go a little more into what's happening here and why things are the way they are. So, without further ado, let me start the homily. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So Lauren and Michael, every time we met for wedding prep, I always told you, take 15 minutes. 15 minutes before our session would start. And after the crazy busy day, running around all over the place, go in the chapel, go before our Lord, in quiet and then just prepare regain your peace so I would tell you don't take 15 minutes right now but take a second in this most emotional moment and realize we are before the altar of God we are here before the altar of God Michael Lauren what a joy it is to be here at the altar of God this day what's an altar an altar is a place where sacrifice is offered. That's what an altar is by definition. And what sacrifice? Whose sacrifice? The greatest sacrifice in the history of the world, where the man God was crucified and died for us. So our faith, our salvation, our hope is based on this sacrifice. And it's about to take place here. It will be rendered present on this altar in just a few instants. So greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's what's about to take place. That's what's about to be rendered present at the altar, which is why the altar is elevated. It is, you know, how many steps did the bride have to climb to get there? But it is elevated, why? It is a symbol of Calvary. And what happens on Calvary? Jesus gives his life for us. 
that's what happens. So, the fact that you're here today, Lauren and Michael, at the altar of God, and your road to standing here at the altar of God has great significance. Why? Because faith is the foundation of your friendship. Love of Christ, the mutual desire you have for one another to know and love the Lord. That's the foundation of your friendship. And the circumstances each of you individually lived through, the crosses, the sufferings each of you individually endured in life, the wonders of God's grace each of you individually experienced. And I know that because I know you. All of these things have shaped you Michael, into the man you are today, standing at the altar of God, and you, Lauren, all these things have shaped you into the woman you are today, standing at the altar of God. And so both of you, you stand here today in Christ's name. And as he said, where two are gathered in my name, here I am in the midst of them. So his sacrifice of love will be made present, and you approach it. You approach it to base your, the rest of your lives upon it. How beautiful is that? You approach it to consecrate one to the other in Christ Jesus. You give yourself to each other in God, and you give yourselves anew to Christ in the other. So yes, your wedding today, you're offering yourselves to the Lord through each other. That's amazing. So you make this vow today based on the treasure of the faith you share. You make this commitment based on the mutual desire to lead each other to heaven. And I would tell you, that's the dynamic equivalent of the vows you share today. Uh, you're my one and only, and I'll do my best to love you and lead you to heaven. It goes both ways. And so remember, this grace you're having today, this grace you are receiving, this grace you're bestowing on each other, was earned by our Lord dying upon that cross. That's where that grace is from. So you're now called to imitate him in your lifelong sacrifice. And where is our Lord for his church? He's nailed on that cross. That's sacrifice. That's a definition of sacrifice. So uh, I once asked a gentleman in one of the happiest marriages I've ever seen as a priest. And uh, actually his confrere is one of my brother priests. Uh, Twelve kids in that family. And I asked him, what is your secret? And he answered two things. She comes before me, and she is my best friend. And of course, this is to go both ways in your marriage. You're both to say this. And uh, if this is the case in your marriage, it will be a blessing in Christ in which you find wholeness. That's what God wants to do. So. Your eternity now will be shaped by the union in which you have entered today. This is your vocation. And God in his great mercy and providence, he has given each of you to the other, that together, as it says in the exhortation, you may make, make the joys of life a little more joyful and the sorrows of life a little more bearable and guide each other to heaven. So now you must see and think first of the other and not think of yourself except as part of the other. And I think this is kind of humorous because you've expressed so beautifully in wedding prep, it's like we share one brain. So may this ever keep on going. Keep that, keep that in Christ. The happiness of your marriage depends upon it. So uh, Michael, Lauren, on the island of Guadeloupe in the Caribbean where I come from, there is an active volcano called La Grande Souffrière. Now I've mentioned this in sermons before, I've mentioned this in wedding sermons, but I like this image. So La Grande Souffrière, beautiful vol volcano, very active, is the highest mountain peak in the Lesser Antilles. It's 5,000 feet high and it's a very strenuous hike and you have to carefully select your day to hike it. The locals there in Guadeloupe say that the difference between hiking it on a clear day or a cloudy day is like the difference between heaven and hell. On a clearer day, you can see all around the island, panoramic view, the neighboring islands, the colors of the forest, the green, the blue of the ocean, the contrast is breathtaking. 
and it makes you forget the weariness from the hike, and it makes it well worth the effort. And you know, there may be some clouds here and there passing through. It's tropical weather, so you may get totally drenched by a sudden downpour of rain, but it's only a matter of minutes before those clouds dissipate and the rays of the sun beam anew. So uh, on a completely cloudy day, though, if you go there, you can only see a dozen feet in front of you. I've tried it a few times. It's gray, it's wet, slippery, cold, gloomy, and very ominous. And if you do go on, the more you smell the sulfur pits, the fumes, the more you feel like you're about to fall into the crater. It looks like torture or feels like torture without consolation. And I thought with this image, marriage is kind of like hiking la souffrière. It can be hellish depending on your dispositions. If you can no longer see the big picture, if that panoramic picture, your God-given vocation, if the clouds of selfishness engulf you, if you only see yourself and your needs, no longer we, but me, me, me. You know, the Hollywood marriage mentality. I love you, yeah, I love you, but I love you for me. What can I get out of this? Well, that's egocentric, and such a marriage is tragic. The marriage in which gifts and strength are used not to support and confirm the other, but instead are used as means to control and hurt the other. So, uh, there is a folklore story in many cultures. It describes two banquets, two great banquets, uh, one in heaven and one in hell. All the participants, they have short arms and very long spoons, overly long spoons. And in hell, they all starve, trying in vain to eat they can't reach their mouths with their long spoons. So, and in hell, they even, so they starve and they even turn on one another and attack each other with their spoons. But in heaven, it's a delightful feast and it goes on because they are feeding each other. So marriage was never meant to be a reflection of hell, but rather of heaven. It's kind of like hiking that volcano on a clearer day. You see the big picture. That's the panoramic picture. That is your vocation, your God-given mission. Your goal? To help one another to heaven. And the, there will be temporary clouds that pass through, of course. Trials, crosses, hardships. But you know that the sun, the sun shines bright beyond those clouds, and it is only a matter of time before they clear. Just like you know through faith that God will be guiding you through those hardships, that he will give you his grace, that he is your rock and your foundation, as faith urges you to trust. St. Paul says, for those who love Christ, all things work unto good. And what's the greatest good? Life everlasting for the family, for you. So no matter how your lives change, whether you are rich or poor, whether you have one child or many, whether you know prosperity or adversity, remember that big picture. Remember the vows you've made this day, the obligations you have towards one another as husband and wife. And there may be many twists and turns and changes in your life together, but what you are and what you owe to each other as husband and wife will never change in this life. Never. So remain close to the Lord, and I know both of you are faithful to that quiet time you have with Christ. This is where you're going to find the strength in Christ to be the best husband, Mike, that you can be, and Lauren, the best wife and mother that you can be, best husband and father, best wife and mother. It's from Christ. And to be best of friends, to be champions of compassion to one another, that's what Christ is calling you to. And think about that word, compassion. If we go to the Latin, com pati, which means to suffer with. So you're signing a blank check to God with both your signatures today. And by the way, uh, we won't forget to uh, sign the register too. But uh, he, will feel, he will fill it, this blank check. He will fill it. And you're called to be the, great, the, the, the face of Christ to each other. Greater love than this no one has, that one lay down his life for his friends. So, Mike and Lauren, this is your day. 
This is the beginning, a new, wonderful begin beginning for each of you. And uh, keep in mind, uh, there is a catacomb in Rome. I think it's the catacomb of St. Priscilla. Now, in many catacombs, our Lord is depicted as the Good Shepherd. Uh, sheep on his right, goats on his left. But in this particular and very unique catacomb, Christ the Good Shepherd has on his shoulders a goat. You can clearly tell by the horns. So he's bringing back a goat to the fold. That's quite amazing. So, well, we know that with original sin, we all begin as goats. And he turns us into sheep. But remember, you're the face of Christ to one another. You're to be the face of Christ to one another. And sometimes it'll be easy and lovely. It will be, come here, my meek, my sweet lamb, or any other lovely little nicknames you can find in the Song of Songs. And other times it will be, ha, ah, my beloved goat. And I'm bringing you back, okay? So all the same, all the same. God has led you to his altar. You are here in his name. He joined you together. And he said, where two are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Mike and Lauren, may it be always this way. And this is my prayer for you and for, the, for you for now and for the rest of your lives as one. Where two are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. May God bless you abundantly on this new path. And may you always be found, and your household be found, under the protective mantle of his beloved mother. You'll be in my prayers always, and especially at the altar of the Lord, where the greatest sacrifice happens, is rendered present every single day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Ecce agnus Dei, ecce quitorit peccatam mundi. Domine non si vius in testa e terrenus, santo di perdo al santo di Domine. Domine non si vius in testa e terrenus, santo di perdo al santo di Domine. Domine non si vius in testa e terrenus, santo di perdo al santo di Domine.
Deus Abraham, Deus Isaac, et Deus Jacob, sit vobiscu, et ipse ad impleat benedictionem suam in vobis, ut veet videatis filios filiorum vesprorum, usque ad tertiam et quartam generationem, et postea vitam eternam abeatis sine fine, adjuvante domine, domino nostro Jesus Christo, qui cum patria et spiritus santo, vivit et regiat Deus per omnia secula secula. Amen. Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. <laughs> 